Are you considering buying a new drone or did you get a new drone for Christmas or have you been flying drones for years? In either case, can you tell me the rules that you're supposed to follow and can you tell me the cost that it takes to fly a drone? Hi, I'm Ken Bouvier with UAV Coach. Today, right here and now, we're going to determine whether you should spend $175 or $32,666 to fly a drone. So let's get started. Currently in the United States, if you plan to fly a drone that's under 55 pounds, you need to qualify as either a one recreational pilot, two, a certified drone or remote pilot, or three, a public safety or a government drone pilot. The rule for operating drones in the United States airspace system is FAA Part 107, period. Now, make sure you understand that statement. If you're planning to fly a drone only for recreational purposes, meaning you're not planning to take photos for real estate listings or capture your son's football game so that they can post it on the website, then there's what's called the exception for limited recreational operations of unmanned aircraft. It's USC 44809. Congress created this law for operations that qualify as recreational so that people who wanna fly drones just for fun don't have to become certified drone pilots. However, recreational pilots are required to take a test that's free and you can't fail. It's called the trust test. This free test can be taken on the UAV Coach website because UAV Coach is an FAA accepted administrator of the test. We'll put a link down below. If you pay $175 to take the FAA knowledge test and get your remote pilot certificate, then you can take photos for commercial purposes as well, as long as you follow the rules of FAR Part 107. Government agencies and law enforcement and public safety entities have two options for operating drones under 55 pounds. First is to operate as a public aircraft operation under a certificate of authorization, and the second way is to follow FAR Part 107. So what is FAR Part 107 all about? Well, simply put, it's the set of regulations that were put in place to help integrate drones into the national airspace system. Today's drones are capable of flying high enough and far enough to interfere with commercial airplane operations or anything else that flies in the national airspace system. And the FAA is mandated to ensure safety of the airspace system. That is the reason that Part 107 exists. And there have been cases of drones colliding with manned aircraft or interfering in other ways in the airspace system. So what can the FAA do if you break the rules? Well, keep in mind that the FAA stresses compliance clients and they don't want to fine you. However, if they find something that justifies a fine, you can be fined up to $32,666 for an infraction. If you are a Part 107 certified pilot, the FAA can not only fine you, but they can take away your certificate. Now, if you are a recreational pilot and you're doing things that are commercially related, like taking real estate pictures and things like that, obviously the FAA can't take away your certificate, but they still can fine you. So if you are going to do commercial activity, you definitely want to get your Part 107 certificate. Drone Pilot Ground School is a course that will help you get that certificate and actually guarantee it or you get your money back. If you don't pass the test, you get your money back. As I mentioned earlier, the FAA is the only agency that regulates drone flights in the national airspace system, period. However, there are other laws and rules that you need to be aware of. For example, national parks. Drone takeoff and landing is prohibited in national parks in the United States. The reason that rule has been implemented is because of past incidents. For example, there have been drones that have crashed in the Yellowstone Park geysers. Now keep in mind, these are park rules, not FAA rules. The FAA won't fine you or cite you or anything for flying in a national park. That would be part of the National Park Service. There also may be laws and rules regulating drone flight in state parks or local parks. And these will be enforced by local law enforcement or state park services, and they can fine you for violation of their rules as well. A lot of those local parks have 
a very easy permit system where you just have to pay a small fee to get the permit. Otherwise, you could be fined up to $500, $600 or more in some cases. Most states have some form of privacy laws as well. And these don't just affect drones, they're privacy laws in general. But if your drone is found hovering over a space where someone has a reasonable expectation of privacy, you can be cited and fined for that as well. And generally those are going to be enforced by law enforcement also. So to break it down in 2024, just think about whether you want to get your part 107 certificate. I recommend it for everybody. And remember that there are different sets of rules and regulations. The FAA governs all of the airspace, but local entities govern where you can take off and land your drone. These things are enforced by those different agencies. So that's it for this video. If you like the information, like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the UAV Coach channel. And from all of us here at UAV Coach, we wish you blue skies and safe flying. And we'll see you next time.